what's up you guys I, want, I had an opportunity uh, while at one of my corporate locations um, to shoot some video of a back workout I did with um, one of my clients and so I wanted to share that with you guys because I, I really enjoyed it and I think it's something that will be helpful um, for you guys if you're looking to um, you know, build some tone and definition in your back and you know even if you're looking to build a little mass you know for the fellas and ladies you know this is important that you work your back as well you know you want to get to summertime you want to wear tank tops and strap the dresses and all that kind of stuff it's important that you work your back muscles as well um, for posture reasons and balance reasons you can't just you know do presses and all kinds of stuff you have to do pulling motions as well so that you're balanced from front to back top to bottom side to side so this particular workout um, consisted of a couple of drop sets and a couple of, um, I'll call them ladder sets, where you uh, go down in reps but up in weight. And so uh, what we did here is a first, a first exercise. And these are shot in no particular order because we were working out, uh, me and um, uh, me and my friend there, we were working out simultaneously. So I had to move the camera around quite a bit. Um, I tried to keep it in as best of order as I could, but these are not in any particular order. Uh, we started off with a, um, a drop set, and it's very important when you're going to the gym, you're gonna do heavy weight, especially if you're starting off early with heavy weight, that you warm up first. If you go in, you try to do heavy dumbbell rows and heavy anything fast, right off the bat, you're gonna hurt your elbows. Flowing it's gonna happen. Speaks. And it's gonna take weeks, maybe even months for that pain to go away. So it's very important that you start with, you know, um, a very good, or you start with some of the light to heavy exercises first. But it's important that you get that blood flowing, you get that joint and uh, those joints and tendons warmed up first, or you're gonna cause an injury somewhere at some point. Never just go in there and throw a bunch of weight on and start lifting. Uh, but what we did here uh, was a drop set. And so we start off with 145 and 335s. We did 10 reps on each arm. So these were single arm hammer rows. And then we dropped the plate off. So it was a 45 and 235s. And we did 12 reps on each arm. And that was, this was our only rep. Our only rest was, um, you know, while we were doing the other arm and then taking the weights uh, off. So then we went down to a 35, uh, a 45 and 135. We did 15 reps on each side, and then we went to a, just a 45, and we did 20 reps on each side. Now, typically, a 45 pound on each side would be super light, but after you've done all those reps, you're really getting that blood pumping in there. And ideally, you'd like to do this unbroken if you can take the pain. But as you can see there, I had to pause real quick just to let that burn subside a little bit uh, before I finished those reps. Now, the other side, you and you're gonna be stronger on one side uh, as opposed to the other. It's always good to get some individual side exercises in so that you obtain some parity and balance. Whenever you're pulling a bar with both hands and using both sides, it's easy to compensate for lack of strength on one side. Um, but when you're doing single arm, it forces you to develop balanced strength on each side. Okay, so next we went to a seated cable row and we used the, the L-shaped U-bar uh, as opposed to the, the, the V style grip uh, because I like to use that simply because it's wider and so it fits further around your torso so you can pull your elbows farther back as opposed to that V style one where you have to stop your hands well in front of, kind of in front of your chest when, you're pump, when the palms of your hands touch your chest. I like that wider grip because it gives you more range of motion. And so what we did here was the exact opposite of what we did with the drop set. So we're going up, uh, down in reps and up in weight. So we started off light at 120 pounds and we did 20 reps. And then we went to one, 140 pounds and then we did um, 15 reps. And we went to 160, we did 12 reps and then we went to 180 and did 10 reps. Now, typically, as I mentioned before, you know, we could easily throw on 200 pounds or 220 pounds, 230 pounds. A lot of times we do body weight and both Trevor and I are over 230. 
And so, you know, we can do, you know, sets of 10 or 12 of our body weight, but you'll get a much, much better pump um, here if uh, with this, because you're doing so many reps in such a short period of time. And I know I'm always focusing on, you know, mind muscle connection and, you know, time under tension, making sure you take your time with your reps. Uh, but sometimes you just got to go in the gym and get that pump, man. And so today we're pump chasing. And what we're trying to do is pump as much blood into that muscle as possible. So instead of for over 30 seconds doing 10, 12 reps, we're doing 15, 20 reps initially. All right. And what we're trying to do is keep it as unbroken as possible, making sure we get all the reps in without pausing um, as much as possible. Now, as far as, as, you know, the further you get into this workout, the more you're going to have to take a break. So keep that in mind. You want to do your best to get all the reps in, but you're going to have to take some breaks here and there because this workout is tough. And as I mentioned before, since we're doing the pump, uh, since we're trying to do a pump, you already have to have a good grasp of your mind-muscle connection. If you do not, and you're just in there flailing all around, not working the muscles that you're trying to hit, then you're not going to get accomplish what you're trying to do uh, at this point. So it's very important that you already have a good mind-muscle connection before you go in there trying to do these drop sets and these unbroken sets. And as you can see, the only rest that we're getting is the time it takes to get up, put the, move the pin, go back over. And we were taking our time doing that just so we got a little bit of recovery. But maybe, you know, 20, 30 seconds tops in between second, in between uh, sets. And that is not enough time for your, your muscles to fully recover. By the time you start the next set, it's burning after two or three reps, as opposed to maybe burning the last two or three reps under traditional bro sets. Now, on this last set, uh, Trevor was using a little bit too much lower back. Now, it's very important that you try not to rock back and forward so that you um, are isolating your lats and the muscles that you're trying to hit. Once you start getting your lower back involved, you're taking away from the weight that is, um, that is being utilized from your upper back muscles, which are the ones we're trying to target here. So now it's my turn. I actually somehow started off with the V-bar. I think I just sat down and started going and um, didn't realize after I'd done a few reps of the bar that I, the, the handle, the grip that I did not want to use. And then I switched after this set. But what we're trying to do here is just keep that muscle working. All right, when you're trying to get a pump, you just want to keep, you don't want to stop at the, the, um, the pulling in or the letting out. Like you don't want to stop on either end. So this is time where you can be slightly less disciplined than you normally are, but you don't want to be sloppy. All right, so you want to uh, keep moving. You don't want to pause as much, but you want to make sure you get the full range of motion. You just want to keep that muscle working the entire time. Keep that, keep those plates moving up and down the entire time. Don't stop it at the at the chest, and don't stop at the full extension. And it's gonna start to burn, man. Like it's gonna burn real good. So this is my set of 15, and you can see my head tilting back and forth. That's fine. All right, but what you don't want to do is have your back leaning back and forward. And actually, I try to sit up as much as possible. The more you sit up on these cable rows, the more you're going to isolate your lats. All right, the more you um, start to lean back, you're going to get into your delts and traps and all kinds of stuff. So really, you want to sit up tall and you want to make sure that you're pulling straight back and not rocking back and forward uh, as much as possible. And so I switch handles here and uh, now I'm down to my set of 12 and man, it's really starting to burn. And if you can get it done unbroken, try your best to get it done unbroken, but it's going to burn real bad. If it doesn't, if you're able to fly through these sets unbroken, then you need more weight. So you need to adjust upwards, you know, all of your weights, because obviously you're going to be changing weight between each set. Um, and, you know, just give yourself maybe 15, 20, 25 seconds to get up, walk it out, shake it out a little bit, and then sit back down and get to that next set. Because you're doing these sets in such quick succession, you're not gonna have much recovery time. And uh, it's gonna give you an opportunity to at least try to get all those sets without resting, but still 
with somewhat good form. You can see there's minimal rocking back and forth here. I'm actively trying not to, even though it's heavy and I'm tired. So I'm starting to rock back and forth just a little bit, but that was the last couple reps. And so now it's time to move on to the next exercise. Okay, so now we're over on lap pulls. All right, we're doing the same thing here on lap pulls. You see Trevor's burning already. He was already, already going. And we're doing the same thing here, lap pulls. We start off at 120, 20 reps at 120. And then we did uh, 15 reps at 140. And then we did 12 reps at 160. And then 10 reps at uh, 180. And like I said before, this is fairly easy weight for us to do while rested and fresh. But when you're doing these back-to-back -back sets, oh, it's gonna burn real bad. And most of the times you're gonna stop just because it burns. That's the signs of getting pumped and hypertrophy is when you stop because it burns, not because you've reached muscle failure and you just can't do the reps anymore. If you reach that point too fast, you're developing strength and not necessarily muscle. So it's very important to realize that you have to choose a weight that is in your efficiency range where you can actually do reps until you know you reach a point of of um, of you know weakness and fatigue and not just inability to do the weight and so see here we're getting the full range of motion pulling down we're using a wide grip you can play with the grips but i find the the widest grip to be the one that targets your lats more it produces like a, a vice with your elbows or you pull your elbows down and in which really activates the lats and uh, you'll see once I get down there, I'm doing them behind the neck um, because I wanted to try something to even more so isolate the lats. I really feel like it's pretty similar. I, don't, I didn't really feel like there was a big benefit to doing them behind the neck. And so, you know, it was pretty much the same. And we're also on our third um, exercise here. And, you know, the further you get into this workout, the more and more it's going to burn and the harder and harder it's going to be get those sets done. Trevor could actually go a little bit faster um, on these reps, but I'm always harping on, you know, being slow and intentional with your repetitions. Uh, so he's been a little bit, uh, you know, uh, he's been a little bit too strict right now for these types of reps, and it's gonna cost him, you know, in terms of having to take more rest. As you can see, when I get down, what I'm trying to do is to uh, make sure I keep that bar moving at all times, all right? I may sacrifice a tad bit of range of motion, um, but not too much form. I'm pulling all the way down as far as I can, and I'm going all the way up. What I'm trying not to do is make each rep take too long. If each rep takes too long, you're gonna run out of gas. Simple as that. So, <clears throat> like I said, I kind of like the behind the neck. I may switch it up every now and then, but I don't see a huge difference in, you know, in, in the, the amount of burn or the amount of pump that I get. Uh, but with this type of workout, it, it, as long as you're doing quality reps, it's going to burn whether you do in front of the neck, behind the neck, close grip, narrow grip, chin up grip, it doesn't matter. It's going to burn. Flowing hands beats. And I also like to point out that um, this is done uh, during Trevor's uh, lunch break. And so, you know, I, I do on-site um, training uh, at corporations. And sometimes, you know, people are on their lunch break. So we don't have a lot of time. It does not take a lot of time to get a great workout in. And I think that's the problem uh, with a lot of people that think they need an hour and a half or two hours to go in the gym and get a good workout. Whenever you're in the gym, only a, only a uh, the majority of the time that you're in there is not going to be actually lifting weights. You spend far more time resting than actually lifting weights. And so some people go on the, in the gym and are just wasting so much time because they're they're walking around and talking and drinking protein shakes and putting on straps and wrist things, this that this that and the other. Man, just go in there and get in and get out. Or if you want to build muscle, you don't have to do a ton of weight. This is going to contribute to your longevity because you're not lifting those heavy weights that cause injuries. But you're getting a mad pump because you're doing these reps back to back without with with very little rest. And so those muscles are going to reach that fatigue level. They're going to reach that hypertrophy level. They're going to 
be full of blood and you can feel the pump like you know you got a good back workout because it's easy to feel the pump in your chest and your arms you know in your triceps your shoulders even you can feel a pump but you got to really work to feel feel it in your back and i know a lot of people go in there and they lift a bunch of weight and big dumbbell rolls and all kind of stuff and you never feel that pump in your back you go in there and you do this workout you will guarantee to feel that pump in your back your back the skin on your back is going to feel a lot tighter you're going to feel it a little bit in your biceps and you're going to feel that blood that extra blood running over into your triceps even though you're not activating your triceps at all so i definitely advise you guys go in and give this workout a try it's definitely gonna um, help develop your back muscles gonna help keep you balanced and it's definitely going to challenge you like we were literally sweating just from doing these drop sets uh in in close succession like we were doing so i'm gonna fast forward through this so i don't make the video too long uh, but that's simply my last set of lap pulls at 10 uh, 10 reps and i had to pause there i had to pause at 10 reps at 180 pounds all right, so then we went to a superset. All right, this is straight arm pull downs. We did straight arm pull downs mixed with face pulls. You gotta realize that whenever you're doing a back workout, you're gonna be working your rear delt. So you might as well let those things work in conjunction sometimes. And so doing, we did um, uh, a drop set, superset. So we did 15 um, straight arm pull downs and uh, 15 face pulls. These numbers may not be reflected in what we're doing right now. As I said, I was moving the camera around. I didn't catch every set. And so we were doing heavy face pulls. Uh, I think we gotten up to 100 pounds, 100 something pounds. I don't remember what the weight was on this. We just went to where it was hard for us to hold ourselves up. And, um, you know, at our, at our weight, that's a significant amount of weight. Just gotta be a weight that's challenging for you. And so we kept the weight the same on this. We did not change the weight as we went. Um, I don't think we changed the weight. Maybe we did. I think we did actually. We might've changed the weight. We just wanted to make it challenging because we, I think we still started at 20 reps and then we went to 15 and then 12 and then 10. And with a lot of these, these um, exercises, you can see the activation. Like you, get, you get a full delt. I mean, you get, you know, your, your delts are activated here, your biceps are activated here, but you're still focusing on, you know, those back muscles as well. That's why the face pull is such a great exercise because it works so many different muscles at once and helps build definition in that upper back shoulder area. All right, this was the last exercise. We did a drop set, just alternating here. All right, we started with um, underhand rows at, I think it was like 185 pounds. Those are 35s, on, 235s on each side. So we did 185 pounds. Um, Trevor just did as many as he could. I think he got like 17 on the first set. I intended us for, for us to do 15, 12, 10, and eight, just based on the weight. And I knew that would be challenging for us. All right, so with underhand rows, you want to pull that bar not to your belly button, but to your waist. The lower you pull that bar, the more you're going to activate um, your lats. All right, and as you can see, you're going to activate your, you know, you're still activating your rear delts, you're still activating your biceps as well. So there's going to be some collateral work done here, but you're still going to be targeting your back. You want, and you want there to be some crossover because the more your exercises are compound, um, the more you're going to develop more muscles at one time and the more calories you're going to burn. So that's important. You can't just go in the gym and do isolation, complete isolation exercises all the time because you've been in the gym forever trying to isolate everything. You can build a good body by doing the proper exercises, the proper compound exercises with good form. You can build your delts, you can build your, your triceps and biceps. You know, on, on chest day, you're working your triceps, you're working your shoulders. On back day, you're working your shoulders, you're working your rear delts, you're working your back muscles, you're working your biceps, you're working your core. Uh, this is also important. And it goes back to the point that I make that you don't need to spend a bunch of time laying on the floor doing abs. If you're doing, if you're picking up heavy weight and lifting it, this is core work. This is as good or better than any amount of time you're gonna spend laying on the floor doing crunches and sit-ups hurting your back. 
And with that being said, make sure your posture is always good. All right, your posture's got to be good. All right, and your base has got to be strong. All right, so that you don't hurt your lower back because you'll be holding that weight for a period of time. So anyways, I think Trevor switched to an overhand grip for this last set because we were really getting fatigued. Our grip was going away because we've been doing pulling exercises for 40 minutes. And uh, so he switched to an, uh, an overhand grip. He just did a traditional uh, bent over row. Uh, I kept with the underhand row. Uh, but anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. Get in the gym, try it out, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. All right, I'll let you guys later. Peace out.